welcome back to the channel. I'm May, and this is my plugger Leah Sky, and we create content for both parents, me, season, and to be. So after a year of puppy ownership, I thought that I would share my accumulated puppy knowledge with you. So in one of my last videos, I answered the question, can Pugger Leah swim? Now, a lot of people then asked me, how do you teach your puppy to swim? So I'm going to answer that in today's video. By the way guys, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what a Pugalia is, have no fear because I have another video talking all about what the breed is, what they look like, their trainability, and all that great jazz. I'll have that video linked down in the description box below if you want to go ahead and check that out. But with all of that out of the way, let's dive right on into the video. Alrighty, so in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I taught my puppy to swim for the very first time. And first things first, you want to gather up everything you're going to need for your first puppy trip to the beach. <laughs> so the first thing that you're going to need is a beach bag. Something that's big and that you can put everything that you're going to take with you in here. The second thing that you're going to need is two towels. So Skye is a small breed of dog, but nevertheless, I still bring two towels with me. And the reason behind that is because the first towel I use to dry her off and then the second towel I use to wrap around her while she's traveling in the car with us. So what I did find is that because Pugalias are a little bit more temperature sensitive, um, she did get a little bit cold after her first time in the water. So it was really lucky that I did have two towels with me so that the second dry towel I could use to wrap around her and keep her warm. Like I said, I highly recommend that you bring two towels just in case. Pop that into... The bag and this is why you need a decently sized bag guys for the beach there we go it's in there okay the second thing you're going to need is a treat bag something like this um, I highly recommend you can just either wrap it around you with the strap or it does have clips so if you're wearing pants you can clip it onto the hem of your pants but yes Highly recommend this because then you can keep treats like this. I just have mine in a Ziploc bag as well so that it's really easy to clean the bag. But you want to have one of these when you take your puppy to the beach for the first time so that it's easy to grab the treats and reward them when they're doing something really, really good. The next item that you want to have on you is a clicker. If you have been clicker training your puppy, which I completely recommend that you do, we clicker trained Sky and it has been super easy to train her just because we've used the clicker method. So take this with you as well for your first trip to the beach. Okay, so the next thing that you're gonna wanna bring is baby wipes. Just keep them in the car, keep them in the beach bag just in case you need them. Not necessary, but we always take um, like a small pack of these with us when we go to the beach. Next item is a harness and a leash. So we just use this one from Fuzz Yard. We've used it a couple of times. We don't mind that it gets a little bit dirty because the color is a little harder to see if you do get sand and dirt on it. So that's why I like to use this one when we go to the beach. So the other thing that you also want to have is a variety of treats. So I will take these treats with me and also the typical liver treats that she does use, which are these. And what I do beforehand is I get them and I break them up into really tiny pieces and put them in my treat bag before I go to the beach so that it's easy for me to give her lots and lots of rewards because they are only small pieces that she's not going to fill up. But like I said, I highly recommend two different kinds of treats just in case they're feeling one more than the other. I just have these two. The other great alternative is if you just boil chicken breasts, dogs and puppies love that, or just beef liver treats. So have a mixture of both just in case. The other thing that I highly recommend that you bring, and she's already found it, is you bring a couple of different toys. <laughs> Baba, it's not playtime yet. <laughs> These, as you can tell, are Skye's favorite, favorite toys. And you want to bring their favorite toys to the beach for the first time so that you can make sure that they have a really positive experience. So my other key tip is not to only to bring their favorite toys, but to also bring toys that squeak. Yeah, because these are great when you're at the beach and you can recall them because it's really loud and you can attract their attention from really far away. So try and find their favorite toys that also squeak. Now, of course, like I said, you need a big beach bag like this, 
But what I also do is I pack a smaller doggy bag. Um, like I said, because you're going to be carrying a lot of different things, I put her toys in here, I put the extra treats in here, just because it fits, woo, because it fits everything like so. And then I can just carry it easily. I also carry the poop bags on here, so really handy dandy just to have a smaller bag when you go to the beach. And what I typically do is I leave this one in the car with all the big bulky towels and items and I carry this one when we're actually on the beach. And then the last item on my list is their drink bottle. So it is going to be very tiring. Some dog beaches or not all dog beaches will have access to water. So I highly recommend that you bring a bottle for them as well. So what I do is I leave this one in the car so that when we come back from the beach, back to the car, she can have her full drink of water there and you don't have to carry something so big and heavy around. Cool. <laughs> you've packed everything, now you're off to the beach. So now that you've arrived at the beach, the most important thing is you have to remember, think about it from your puppy's shoes or paws, maybe paw socks, I don't know. But step into their frame of mind and think about it when you're going to this place for the very first time, you've never seen anything like it before, you've never smelled anything like it before. Of course, they're going to be super, super active, going crazy about all these different scents. So my very first recommendation is that you don't go directly to the beach. What you should do is you should put your puppy on a harness and then take them for a walk. Walk around the area, get them to sniff the grass, sniff the pole, sniff the sidewalk. Let them do their business if they have to go do their business because you might have driven a very far away. But just get them used to the environment, get them to sniff it all out and get them to calm down just a little bit. So that's the very first step. Okay, and once they've got some of their excitement and their curiosity out of the way, you can start to approach the shoreline. When you approach the shoreline as well, keep a lookout for places on the beach that don't have as many people or as many dogs as well. Because what you want to do is you want to minimize distractions and get them really comfortable with being in the environment of the sand and the water. So something that I did for the very first time when I went with Sky was I had her on her leash. I went down to the shoreline and we just walked around. We walked around to different parts of the sandy beach and we just checked out different little areas and then we found a spot that didn't have any barbecues, didn't have any kids, no dogs, stuff like that. And the second important thing to look at is if the water is quite calm. So you want to find a spot where there aren't crashing waves. A little bit of a current is fine, but you really want to find um, some water that is a bit more peaceful and a little more calm so that it's easier for them to approach for the very first time. And I guess it also minimizes <laughs> the amount of errors and mistakes that could happen if you introduce a small puppy to a big wave. So now that you've got them in a calm state, you have checked out the area a little bit by walking them around and you found a more secluded and calm spot. This is what you're going to have to do next. What you want to do is you want to slowly approach the water's edge. So still have them on leash, get them walking with you and just monitor to see if your puppy is willing to walk towards the water. And as they walk towards the water, this is when you want to start clicking and treating and be like, yes, good girl, well done. And give them really positive and encouraging words as they get closer to the water. And what this does is it ensures that they have a positive experience with being at the beach, with being close to water. And take it slow because every dog, every puppy is different and also depends on your breed too. If you have a water loving breed like a Labrador, a German Shepherd or a Poodle, maybe at this step, you might even see that they run towards the water and they just want to jump in. If that happens, congratulations, your puppy should probably automatically start swimming. But if you're like us and you have a breed that doesn't mind the water and needs a bit of teaching, then follow on. So like I said, if you have a breed like Skye, just monitor them and see what they do. If they continue to take steps towards the water, praise them, encourage them, get them closer and closer and closer. If you can see that they are a little uncertain, just stop where you're at or return to the last place of where they felt comfortable and then treat them again. So like I said, <laughs> some puppies take more or less time. You really, really don't want to push them. Just see if they're willing to go further and you 
go with what they're feeling, not what you're feeling is the most important thing. Moving on, if they look like that they're getting comfortable approaching the water, they're taking steps towards it, and again, keep up the positive reinforcement. And what you want to do is you want to do this in very frequent intervals. And if they look like that they're getting more and more comfortable, then you can decrease the intervals a little bit. All right, you're at the water line, now what to do next? Typically what I've seen is a puppy's general curiosity should take over. They should probably reach out with their snout, extend their body line to check out the water, and they may start to put a paw in. If you see any of these signs, if they're extending their head towards the shoreline to smell it, or if they're reaching out with their paw, click treat positive reward. Get them to understand that it is a really great thing that they're going towards the water themselves. And like I said, just repeat, 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 and eventually they will put in one paw and then a second paw. And like I said, you want to make sure that your positive reinforcements are at a very high frequency at this stage and that you're really, really telling them that this is a safe environment, this is an awesome place to be, and that they're going to love it. But like I said before, if you see that they're hesitating or that there's any kind of negative reaction from them, don't push them. Go back to the previous step where they were comfortable and take it from there again. Now, with Sky, it was fairly easy to teach her to swim because as we started to reinforce that being in the water was positive, she just started to step around and be okay with getting her paws wet. And when they're at that stage where all four paws are wet, what you want to do is you want to roll up your pants and this is where you start to go deeper. What we found with Sky when she was a puppy is the thing that worked best was luring them out. So what you want to do is you want to get your treat in your hand like this, and what you do is you lure them. So you get them nibbling on it like that, and then you move, and they should move where the treat is. So this is what you want to do when you're at the beach. Keep it close to their snout and just lure them in the direction that you want, which is going a little bit deeper into the water. See, you can just slowly inch it and they will follow. That's what you want to do. Good girl, Sky. And again, positive, positive reinforcement. <laughs> if you find that your food lure is not working, then you switch over to their interactive toys. You squeak the toys, you play around with the toys, get them to know that it's a fun place that you can play around in. Or try switching to the other treat, like I said, keep two kinds of treats on hand and see if they are more responsive to the other kind of treat. And what you want to do is you want to slowly step out deeper and deeper into the water, luring them with either food or their favorite toy. And once you get deep enough, they should automatically start doggy paddling. And there you have it. Your puppy can probably swim. Now, what you want to be really perceptive to for their first time at the beach is to see how comfortable they are. Like I said, they should automatically start paddling. But if they look like they're not enjoying it, then help them get back to the shore really, really quickly where they can stand. And then repeat the process again, slowly go out to a deeper water and then bring them back in and get them comfortable with being in the deep water and the shallow water. And like I said, every single puppy is different. So make sure that you're monitoring them and seeing their reaction. So some great signs that you can tell if your dog is enjoying the water or not is for example, with Sky, her tail, if you guys can see that, back can over here? If you guys can see this, her tail curls up. If her tail is down or if it's straight, that is a clear indication to me that, okay, she's feeling a little bit anxious. She's not too sure about this. Let's take her back to a place where she's comfortable and her tail should come back up again. Another great uh, way to observe their body language is their ears and the position of their ears. Now, like I said, each breed is different, but you have to know what your dog looks like when they're happy. And for Skye, her ears are typically forward and up. If she's not liking it, they'll be tucked back and down. As long as you're monitoring them, making sure that they're enjoying their first time at the beach, you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Okay, so what I will do for this video, guys, is I will have video clip inserts here of when we're actually at the beach so you can see what each of the steps look like in practice. Hey guys, so Sky and I just got out of the car and this is what I mean. Sky, sit, wait. So you can see the water's over there and the beach is over in that direction. 
But what I'm gonna do is she's pretty excited right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around the area, get her less excited and a bit more calm before we head down to the water just over the edge there. So shall we go, Bubba? Sky, come on. Okay, you'll see like she's sniffing about. And then this is probably a good opportunity to see if she wants to go to the toilet. So Sky, go potty. Sky Baba, go potty. There we go. Alrighty. So like I said, you want them to walk around, get used to the area. If they need to go toilet, let them go toilet. So you can see that after that huge sniffing fest and then after going to the toilet and stuff, she is a lot more calm. process of how you get your puppy to swim for the very first time. So the other thing in this video that I really wanted to highlight is some things that you probably shouldn't do um, when your puppy is going to the beach for the very first time. And the number one thing that I highly recommend that you don't do is throwing them into the water. So it is quite unfortunate that I have seen some fur parents pick up their pup and just toss them into the ocean and just magically wish that their natural instincts will kick in and they'll magically start swimming. The reason why this is the first thing I mention not to do is because, like I said, easiest thing to do is go and 
Imagine that you're the puppy for the very first time. You've never seen a body of water. Somebody picks you up and they throw you into the deep end. Are you naturally going to start swimming? Probably not. So like I said, just imagine it from their perspective and slowly introduce the water. And then the second thing that I wanted to highlight with this entire process is that you shouldn't force them into anything. An example of this should be um, if they're swimming in the water and they look like they're not enjoying it, don't force them to swim for longer than they want to. The key to this entire process is to monitor them, like I said before, and to go with their pace. If they're fast to pick it up, great. If they're a little slower, then you might just need to go back to the beach a second time, a third time, and repeat the process. But the moral of the story is, don't push them out of their comfort zone, make sure that they're really happy to be there, and eventually they will swim. All right, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it, <laughs> and you picked up some good tips to teach your puppy to swim for the very first time. As a bonus, guys, I've actually salvaged some footage from my old iPhone that I got of Skye going to the beach for her very first time and learning to swim with us. So I will insert that footage here for you guys to see as well. If you guys liked the video, please be sure to pour the thumbs up and also beat the subscribe button so that you can see more fur baby related videos. And don't forget to tap that notification bell so that you don't miss out on our next upload. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or you just want to have a conversation and join the fur family, please be sure to check out our Instagram at OneSocksGuy, follow and DM us. Bye for now, but we'll see you in the next one. Boop. And you can see like she's making her way towards the beach. I would also see if you can... <laughs> You're making this impossible, Sky. Bang! Sit!